Hello! So in this video, I will be showing you step by step of how I turned this refinery from War World Gaming into a post-apocalyptic looking structure. This will also act as a guide and a tutorial on some of the steps of how I achieve weathering and rust and decay. So first of all, I'm going to show you how I approach doing washes. You can buy a lot of really good pre-made products, but I tend to like using oils for this step. I have got a previous tutorial on how to use oils. You can't water oils down with water, you have to use a spirit, an odorless spirit is probably best. The cool thing with oils is you can wipe it off with a cloth with odorless spirits on or with a cotton board or something like that. This wood has absorbed the oils more so it's harder to wipe away than on plastic or metal. Another really great thing you can use is enamel paints and washes. It's the type of stuff you paint a fence with. Gaming dips are actually really good as well, and I think contrast paints too because they're really thick and goopy. If you don't have any of these, just put on some ordinary washes. I think sepia tones look the best. Moving on now to approaching the colours. So here I've already added some washes, and now we're going to look at adding some layers of rust. You can vary the textures on these so you can leave them a bit more thick and goopy like an impasto style or you can dry brush them on as well. I think it's good practice to have a look at some real world examples of rust too, either googling it or taking some pictures yourself if it's safe to and have a look at how the colours work. I'm using a lot of intense different types of colours in this and using it to the full extent. Obviously you don't have to do this yourself, you can just keep it quite minimalistic. You can also buy these dry weathering paints. Amo Mig, Vallejo and a lot of other companies make them and they're good for creating some textures and layers of rust. You can also wipe away some of the colours you've used just to create some discoloration as well. Now for one of my absolute favourite products that I own. These oils are specifically made for miniature painting and this colour is wonderful for creating like a verdigris type of rust. You can dab this on to create more texture or you could use it as a wash as well like I showed you earlier with the oils. You can also use a sponge to dab on the paint as well to create some randomization in the textures and colours. And here is a progress shot of what I'm up to so far. And now onto one of my favourite parts, texture, where we'll create some crust. So I've grabbed another part of the terrain piece to show you as an example. I've basically put some glue and sand down. The darker areas I've used coffee grounds, you can use glue with baking soda, wood shavings, whatever else you've got around to create some nice crustiness. Another thing I've done here is just put some glue down and then paint it over the top when it's dry to make it look warped. Another thing you can use to create some different effects are these weathering pigments, a lot of different companies sell them in varying different colours. You just need to use them with a brush which is dry and just dab it onto the areas you want to use. Another everyday household item you could use instead are spices, especially like paprikas and chilies and turmeric's good as well. You will have to glue this stuff down though. I'll put it on a flat surface and put some hairspray over the top of it. Do be aware this can get messy and once you don't get it in your eyes. You can also crush up charcoal or just rub it onto the surface area, but you will have to secure it with hairspray. You can also use pencils as well. Some companies do sell weathering palettes, but you can just buy a cheap makeup palette, get a little brush or a cotton swab and put it on, secure it with some hairspray. Another thing you can use is foliage to make it look more weathered and decrepit and like it's been abandoned for a long time. You can buy a lot of really cool pre-made products. I find the stuff you get from model train sets and dioramas are a lot better than wargaming supplies. You can also use the insides of tea bags. They've got a lot of interesting different colours and textures in them. I'm 
I'm now just adding some plants. You can get some plants you would use in a fish tank or an aquarium and cut them up as well if you wanted to. Different companies sell these types of bits like Green Stuff World or Model Railway sets do sell a lot of interest in different bits and pieces. For our last step I am going to be showing you how to make chipping and crackling. I have some of this crackling paint which you use for furniture. It's very thick and like a jelly but it does dry clear. I wouldn't recommend using a brush with this, you're probably better off with some wood or cocktail sticks. You can also buy pre-made crackling medium as well, a few different companies do sell this. Now I'm just going to show you how the crackling paint works once it's dried. So if you put it on thicker, it'll make bigger cracks, and if you put it on thin, it'll make these small, really fine cracks. As I said before, you just need to spread this on. I usually use popsicle sticks. Now on to creating chips. So I tend to use this chipping medium from Vallejo. A few different companies sell it as well. So I've firstly primed the area I want to be using in a dark colour. So this is going to be the rust colour which is going to be showing underneath. I've waited for this to dry and then I'm going to be adding some drops of the chipping medium. The more you use, the more intense the chipping will be. I'm just using a brush which is dry to spread this out. You'll want to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to add my top layer of paint. I'm not adding this to needs, obviously I've just add a bit more texture. And then that's it once it's dried, you can see some of the crackles start to show. We are now going to reactivate the medium by putting a little bit of water on from a brush. The more water you add, the bigger the chipping will be. Now you will want to grab a toothpick or a stiff brush to start to peel this away. You can use your fingernail as well if you want to. If you want some more intense weathering, you can use a toothbrush as well to start to scrub it off. And here's the effect it's created, it looks really cool in a different way of approaching weathering. Next we are going to approach chipping by using hairspray in a similar method. So I've just primed the area in the darker colour and then put a layer of, and I've waited for that to dry, and then put a above layer paint on and waiting for that to dry. Again, I'm scraping this off. The hairspray is a lot more intense than the chipping medium. You might want to put down a layer of varnish over the first coat of paint just so it doesn't chip off as much as it has done here, but it still looks pretty cool as an effect. There are different ways and different methods of creating rust and decay depending on the subject matter. Obviously this is more tailored to creating metal leaking weathering and more science fiction post-apocalyptic. I'm really happy with the results here. There's a lot of interest in different colours and it has an element of realism but also an arty effect with the, the different layers of, of colours and hues which I've created. As I said before, it's worth googling some images on rust and decay, even if it's like for rock or stone or wood. Video games are also a good place for inspiration, especially the concept art, games like The Last of Us, and Gears of War, and Fallout as well, get some ideas from. Thanks for watching, I hope this was helpful to you. You can find my other works in several different places. You can also donate on my Ko-fi if you like.